Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to the Beginning C Sharp with Unity screencast series. In this episode, you'll be introduced to constructors. Constructors allow you to prepare your object before you use it. So far in this series, you've been creating structs in two parts. The first part of the process was you creating the struct. And the second part of the process was you assigning values to the struct. Constructors allow you to combine these two different phases so that you can create an object while also assigning it values. Let's say you have a monster struct and you want to assign it some health. Instead of assigning it some health after the fact, you can actually just pass in the health when you create the object. Then, when your object is created, it's good to go. Here's how it works. You can think of constructors, at their core, as specialized methods. You start by defining an access modifier. Next, you provide the name of the struct. You can think of this as the return type. Following the name, you provide a pair of parentheses and any parameters you wish to pass into the constructor. Finally, you provide a pair of braces and set up any instance variables. Once the initialization is complete, that's it. There's no need for a return statement. Since it is a constructor, the return type is inferred and not necessary. Your object can contain multiple constructors for your various fields. Each constructor must have unique signatures, that is, the types being passed into a constructor. For instance, if one constructor has just a string parameter, then you can't make another constructor with only one string parameter. Also, when you implement a constructor, you must make sure that all instance variables are provided values. So far, you may also be wondering how you have been able to create your objects without the use of constructors. Well, if you don't provide one, c -sharp will automatically create one for you. This has greater implications when working with classes as you'll learn in the next section. The default constructor has no parameters and doesn't assign values. Finally, one last thing to keep in mind. When working with structs, the new keyword is entirely optional. You can just define a variable and start initializing its fields. For the sake of learning, keep using the new keyword for now, but typically you can omit it with structs to increase performance. Okay, to get working with constructors, we're going to create a very simple struct and we're gonna call this RPG character. So here in beginning object oriented programming folder, I'm gonna click the create button. I'm gonna choose C-sharp script and I'm gonna call this RPG character like so. So here we have our RPG character, and this is a type of mono behavior, and we actually don't want that to be the case. We want this to be a struct. And uh, so we just deleted all that, and we'll change this name from class to struct like so. So the very first thing we're going to do is give this RPG character some properties. The first one's going to be the name. Next, we'll add strength, intelligence, and dexterity, and these will all be integers. So at this point, we have our struct. Now I want to create some constructors. The first constructor we'll create is a constructor that will simply take in all these variables. And we do that by typing public, and then we call this RPG character, because remember, this is the return type, and then we put in some R parentheses. Next, I'm just gonna pass in the variables, and these will just match the names of the existing properties. And there we go. Now you can see we're getting an error, and this is just telling us that we haven't assigned values to our properties. And I'll do this now. I'm gonna use this since I'm referring to this current object. And I'll just set up all the properties like so. So there we go, we have our constructor. It's a very simple constructor. Now I wanna create another constructor and this constructor is just going to take a name. Then what we can do is randomly assign values to the other fields. So we can type public and we'll do RPG character. And this time we're just gonna pass in the name like so. 
Now I'm going to create some random values. So for strength here, what I'm going to use is a function called, is a class I should say called random. And I'm going to call the range method on this. And we're just going to put zero from 18. And we're going to do this for each of the attributes. So here is our second constructor. All that the caller has to do is pass in a name and all the other character attributes will be randomly generated. Now this isn't exactly obvious what this constructor does. In fact, I may want to have the caller use a method instead so it makes it much clearer to understand. So what I'm actually going to do is disallow public access to this method. So I'm just gonna write private like so. Now, no one can call this constructor except the object itself. Okay, so how do we actually utilize this private constructor? Well, we're going to use a keyword known as static. And I'll be covering static later in this series, but to give you a quick overview, a static means when you create a static property or a static method, that method exists not on the instance of an object, but on the struct itself on the defining template of that object. So in this case, it would exist on the RPG character struct in any instance can access this method. So what I'm going to do is create a public method and I'm going to label this as static. Next, I'm going to define the return type, which is an RPG character. And I'm going to call this get random character and we'll pass in the name like so. And then all I'm going to do is return a new RPG character. And I'm going to pass in the name. So what the callee does is they access this method and then this method itself uses this private constructor. And that's how we're able to access private constructors. Typically, you'll use private constructors when working with the design pattern known as a factory pattern. And the purpose of a factory pattern is to produce new objects for the callee. And the callee doesn't have to worry about configuring or setting up the object. The factory pattern itself handles that for the callee. Finally, I'm going to create a simple method that's going to output all these character values to a string. Now there's another way of handling this, but I'll show you that in the next section. And here you see we have just a simple method called get character stats, which takes all the current stats, puts them into a string, and then returns that string. Okay, let's see this in action. Here we are back in Unity. I'm going to create another script, and we're just going to call this RPG, like so. And now in on disable, we're going to make a few characters. So here we have an RPG character called Draco, and we'll create a new RPG character, like so. And we're going to give him the name, his name. So we'll say Draco. And you can see we have this code completion above, which really helps out. So we have the, the strength is 10. We'll say the intelligence is 15, and the dexterity is 6, like so. And now what I can do is we can print this out. And we'll just call Draco like so. And now we'll say get character stats. This is the string method we just returned. And this is much a much cleaner way of doing it. Again, there's another way of printing out your objects to a string, which we'll be covering in the next section. Now I want to create a random NPC. So we're just going to do an RPG character. 
and we'll just call this random NPC. And now I'm going to type RPG character because again, this is a static method that we created and I'm going to call get random character. And now we'll just put in the name. We'll say, we'll say uh, jail room guard. And this creates the character for us. Now we can just print this character out. And just looking at this, you can see this is a much cleaner way of working with our code. All the specific code that's responsible for the objects are now encapsulated within those objects. We don't have, we don't have additional code scattered throughout this file that has nothing to do with, say, an RPG character. Back in Unity, I'm going to select my cube. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this property person script. And we're going to add RPG like so. Now we're going to run the game with our console open. What I'm going to do next is we're going to disable the cube. And you can see we have Draco, Strength 10, Intelligence 15, Dexterity 6. This is everything that we set up. And then we have the Jail Room Guard, Strength 8, Intelligence 8, Dexterity 12. And that's it. If I start stop this and restart it again, we can come back here disable the cube, and you can see now we have a different set of character traits for the jail room guard. That's it for this tutorial, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a spell struct with three fields. Name, which is a string, damage, which is an int, and area of effect, which is a float. Next, I want you to create three constructors which will match this code. The ice ball does a default damage of 10 and a default area of effect of 1. The fireball does a damage of 100 and a default area of effect of 1. The earth shake does a damage of 10 and an area of effect of 100. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, in your challenge, I provided you some code, and the code was constructing spells and you were to go back and create those spells object based on how those spells were being constructed. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna create a new script and we'll call this spell, like so. And we're gonna open this up in Visual Studio. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is turn this into a struct. So what I'm gonna do is delete all this add my brace here and we'll change class to struct. Now this spell contained a few properties. It contained the name, the damage, and the area of effect. So I'm going to produce these properties now. Okay, now that we have those properties set up, I'm going to provide some reference for the example code that I provided. So first let's create our first constructor and this will simply take a name. So we'll type string name like so. And now we're going to assign the values. So if you just provide a name, it does a damage of 10 and it has an area effect of one. Now we're going to provide another constructor that provides both the name and the damage. And finally, we'll provide a spell that produces, that takes all three values.
And now just for convenience, I'm going to provide a method that simply gets the spell stats. Okay, back in Unity, I'm going to create another script, and we'll just call this spells, like so. And now I'm going to create on disable. And we'll return back to spells over here, and we'll copy this code, and we'll put it in here. And now we'll simply print out the values of each of those. Now we're going to select the cube here. And I'm going to remove this RPG. And instead, I'm going to add the spell script. And now we're going to run our game. We're going to open up the console. I'm going to disable the cube. And you can see now we have all of our information about our objects. Thank you.